Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a long time no see. This last quarter of the season, Tanitra, we want, would like to see continue to grow and get better, you know, in each phase, continue to hone in on doing our jobs at a high level, each individual, and with the overall result of putting our offense and defense in the best field position possible. You talk about in the coverage game, we're trying to control field position or at least take the ball away, get the ball away from the return team, and in the return game, make smart decisions, make the right decisions, and make sure that we have the ball for our offense on the next play, and then a step further, you know, put our offense in great field position. You know, whether it's the return game, getting the ball at the 50-yard line, you know, getting the ball past the 25-yard line on kickoff return, just those little things. However way in the return game we could gain yards, gain first downs, and make it easier for our offense. So those are the things that we're looking for this last quarter. And how important has it been for you, especially these last couple of weeks, to have someone like Thomas Morstead be able to put you in that position and, and put our, the team in the position to succeed as far as how successful he's just been in, in punts? It's, it's been good having, you know, we're going to coach whoever's on the roster. It's a blessing having Thomas in the building. The last two weeks, he's been punting well. He's been getting acclimated to our terminology, our philosophy, and what we're looking for in a punter when it comes to the Atlanta Falcons. So it helps, you know, having him here to be able to help. We talk about controlling field position, being able to flip the field, because, you know, no special teams plays, 40 or more yards are being exchanged on each particular punt. So having his experience and, and having him in the building has been, has been helpful for our special teams unit. What was, what was the, the decision making process like uh, when Dustin was coming off? I had to make a decision with regards to which corner y'all were going to keep. You know, those decisions are strictly for, you know, Coach Smith and Terry. They're, they're the ones that make the decision when it comes to the roster. It's our job as coaches to coach the 53 that are on the roster, plus the 16 practice squad, and then the 48 on game day. So those decisions are strictly with those, you know, those individuals. They don't consult the, the Yeah, we do, cons we do consult, but those discussions are private, and then, you know, those decisions are made ultimately by Coach Smith and Terry. What is y'all like? Well, what is Thomas doing particularly well uh, that you know allowed him to you know win that I guess competition with, without the punter being. I don't know necessarily to say you know win or loss, but having Thomas in the building, he brings experience. You know, he brings his expertise when it comes to playing the game. He's seen a lot of the game, as as um, as our other punter uh, Cole Quit was in the building. You know, Thomas also too he does a you know great job punting the ball directionally, and he provides experience for those guys that played at different positions. Just because he's a punter, he's able to help out the gunners, have those that dialect with those guys, having the experience to help out with Koo and Josh and providing that information both on and off the field. So he's been great for the room. How much has, has, how much has what you maybe have done in the return game changed with Cordero basically not being your kick returner at this point? I mean, we, we believe in small menu, big understanding. So the dynamic of our philosophy in the return game doesn't change when it comes whether it, whoever's back there, whether it's CP, Avery, OZ, you know, Gallman, if we decide to put them back there, whoever's back there as our returner, it's we trust them with the football, and our job is to get the ball north-south, put the football, and be able to get the ball past the 25-yard line. That's the objective. We want to get it past it. A touchback's 25-yard line, so anything plus that helps our offense. So the philosophy doesn't necessarily change. We might not take the ball a little bit deeper than usual, but again, we did it in the preseason with Avery, so it just depends on week by week on who we're going against, uh, the defense that we're going against, the coverage unit that we're going against, and the situation within the game. Do you have more rules? For Avery, on kick returns than maybe you did for CP because, like, like we talked about in the past, of where you would take it out, maybe where you would. Mm -hmm. Are there more rules for Avery? I wouldn't say it's week by week, and that's what's is I mean, now. Obviously, CP he has a history and he has the longest return in the NFL on kickoff return, so he has a little bit more leeway when it comes to that. But Avery, there might be opportunities, there might be situations where he might be in that same position and he could take it out, and it could be he has the opportunity to be 109 yards. As case by case, this, that conversation is with Coach Smith and myself, and it's based on the situation within the game, what we're looking for, what we see against their coverage unit, and the, the, the design scheme that we have for that particular week. And when 
When it comes to CP, I mean, at the beginning of the year, he was working a little bit maybe as a gunner. He was the kick return. Have you had? Have you really seen guys or a guy like him who's gone from special, like involved in so much special teams to being so much part of an offense or a defense that you're like, you can't really have him play that anymore? You see that, but you don't see it expedited as, as fast as it is with Cordell. And again, he does a great job of just whatever his role is and wherever we put him at, whether he's on offense, defense, or special teams, helping the team. So, you know, that's a, it's a testament to who he is as a person and he, how much value he brings to the team when it comes to where, whatever he does. As soon as he crossed that line, he's the, one of our, I mean, he's the ultimate competitor and he's a very selfless individual and he's gonna do whatever it takes to help the team, whether it's covering kicks, whether it's returning the football, whether it's running the ball, blocking, or, you know, batting the ball down if it's an end of half in the game situation. He always says that special teams is his bread and uh, butter mm -hmm. and his kind of uh, commitment to it is, is high. Do you think that that, that leadership by example, that kind of influence kind of maybe helps you get the most of your guys during the special teams periods like that you have? Like he's a, a good example of a guy who started on special teams and has really made it. Yes, and there's a lot of great examples throughout the NFL that I'm sure pretty a lot of special teams throughout the NFL, they show various examples of players that you could say, for say, graduated from special teams and they have a significant role in offense and defense. And you look at it too. You have 48 guys on game day roster now. You know, these last two years, you have the 48 players on there. If you're a special teams player, you're probably a backup on offense or defense, and you're always one play away from getting an offensive rep or defensive rep. Perfect example, Austin Eckler, I coached him in 2017. He made the team because of special teams. Tryout player, made the team, was a gunner for us. Actually had 17 tackles that year in the NFL. Week four of the season, I believe, we played the Eagles the year they won a the Super Bowl. His very first NFL carry was a touchdown, 30-some yard touchdown because he had a helmet because he was playing special teams. So there's always various examples. Yeah, obviously CP's one of them, um, but he does a great job leading by example. And obviously anybody that's addressed on game day, they gotta be prepared for whatever their role is and, and an in-game adjustment too, understanding that their role can change based on injuries. Just like this last game, we had a couple of guys go down and a couple of guys had to step up on offense and defense. And that's the name of the game is being prepared before the opportunity presents itself. And you know, some people they're, they're unprepared, then they have opportunity and now they're like, what do I do now? Us as a staff and as an organization, the 48 are dressed on game day, they have a role in knowing that their role can change throughout the game, throughout the season. I saw something that it was kind of talking about the Falcons percentage of play for rookies was kind of the highest in, in the league. And uh, a big part of that is because of their special team snap. And, and I was just curious from your perspective how this rookie class has taken ownership of their roles on special teams. I believe they've done a um, great job of taking ownership in their role, Tori. These guys want to go out there and compete, and they work their tails off each and every day, whether it's on offense, defense, or special teams. And it's an opportunity for them to help the team, and they understand that. You know, you get a guy like Avery that's a defensive player. Well, on special teams, he's an offensive player and a defensive player. You get Darren Hall. He plays corner. But in the return game, he's an offensive player. So those guys understand they have opportunity and they have ownership in helping the team and putting ourselves in, or putting our team in great field position, whether it's offense or defense. And they've been great for the room. They, they want to spend time, do extra meetings and stuff like that to understand their responsibilities and their particular role each week when it comes to special teams. I feel like this probably goes back to Tanitra's question that she asked you. But, you know, I've been thinking about this whole idea of playing a complete game. And, and for your unit, particularly, what does it take to kind of play into that, to kind of be the, the third of playing a complete game? You know, on our end of special teams is making sure, one, we protect the football in the return game and, and protection, punt pro and, and field goal, making sure that we're making our kicks, we're protecting the football when it comes to either when we're running it or when we're kicking it. We're being able to cover kicks. So attack the football, keep leverage on the football, eliminate any, any big returns. And then we wanna be dominant at the point of attack. We wanna be a physical team. Anytime there's contact, we wanna be dominant in that aspect. And then the last element of it is winning our situational plays. Offense and defense, you have first, second, third, fourth down. On special teams, it's a one down mentality. We don't get a second down. So every time we go out there, we're focused and we're standing in the present on that particular down and seeing if we could win that down. And it might not be a dynamic return, but hey, we fair caught the ball on a short punt and we fair caught it at the 12 yard line rather than getting out the way, letting it bounce inside the one yard line. You know, those things go unnoticed sometimes or down on the punt. 
or making sure we're not make, getting a, like let's say we get a 15 yard return on a punt return, but uh, we had a player that was in a position where he could have got a penalty, he could have blocked somebody in the back, but he put his foot in the ground, retraced and blocked somebody else. It's just eliminating those self-inflicting wounds, making sure we're playing complimentary football, we're situationally aware of things that are going on, just like the Jacksonville game, and then protecting the ball and attacking the football. I know he's. It's he, not a shot, Josh Harris. I'm just trying to maintain the consistency to have a ten-year career at that spot. When you when you talk about pros that play for a long time, you, it, the biggest thing that you look at is the preparation that they they put in behind the scenes. Like obviously, you see him on the practice field and what he does, but it's behind the scenes how he takes care of his body, the the film work that he puts in, how he studies, understanding protections, understanding the rushes that we're going against particularly week, being able to be ad adaptable and adjustable, uh, being able to adjust to different specialists that comes in the building. You know, he's worked with very many different specialists, whether it's punters and kickers, and being able to, one, compliment those guys when it comes to the snap, comes to the hold, comes to them catching the ball on punts, and then his coverage ability. You know, he's gotten better in coverage, and he's continued to do a great job for us. And he's one of those individuals, um, you would love to have him as a teammate, and you would love to coach him if you had the opportunity, just because of, how selfless he is, and he's, he does a great job of leading by example, whether it's on the field, whether it's off the field. So there's, a, I mean, obviously he has his physical characteristics, but those those variables that he has and those outliers he has are off the field, what he does off the field. To He's a pro's pro. He does a great job of that. And that's what helps with being and sustaining a long duration in the NFL. Because some, some guys could peak at a certain level because once they go to this and their athletic ability drops and then they go straight down because they're not taking care of their body, nutrition, they're not getting enough sleep, they're not preparing as well. And he does a great job of all those things when it comes to that. Yeah, Coach, I was charting uh, the hang times uh, uh, for, for, for Thomas. How how they look for you guys? I, I mean, I just got the time on it. I don't know if it's good or not. What you got there? What you, what times you got? I got four one three on a thirty six yarder. Mm -hmm. That was a flopper. Oh, the so, flip flop? Yeah, yeah end of ran. Flopper, and then you got a uh, you got you got your people down there in time to force the fair catch. So yeah. I, 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 I thought that was. There we go. You would have probably approved of that one. I give him a plus. Okay. Give him a plus. <laughs> Hey, we got him inside the 20-yard line. And it varies based on kicks. You know, hang times, too, you could hit a 45-yard punt, and it could have, example, it could have a two-second hang time, and it hits right on the paint on the sideline. Uh -huh. Well, I don't care about the hang time because it wasn't returned. Right. You know, Or you could have a 60-yard punt, you know, and it could have a 4-2 hang time. Mm -hmm. Well, the returner just caught that ball, and he has like 12, 15 yards to work with. Or he could hit a 20-yard punt, and it has a five-second hang time. Well, that's not good because it's only went 20 yards. So it's all complementary of what we're trying to do. We talked about before, hang time, location, plus the distance. And he's been doing a good job, and he continues to get better you know, in our system, getting the ball outside the numbers, directional punt, and giving our gunners an opportunity to go down to make plays, and also, too, giving our punt interior enough time to protect because they have a hard job, too. They got to protect and then transition into coverage. So giving them time because they're on offense until the ball's kicked, and then now they got to transition to defense. So when it comes to that, he's continuing to get better. He's doing a better job with the location, and it's a great opportunity and great challenge this week uh, come Sunday when it comes to playing ball and being able to cover kicks. Yeah, awesome. And then just a little bit on the Panthers uh, units. Um, you know, we know Zane and uh, Edwards. Uh, I guess Erickson's been doing the punts, and they got Abdullah, but he it was seven touchbacks last game, so I don't know. We know he can't run it, you know. Yeah, it was, had the opportunity to uh, coach against Amir. He does a great job getting north-south. He's always looking to cut the ball back when it comes to being a returner. Um, Erickson, he's a north-south runner as well. Uh, he has a history. He actually has two returns for touchdowns that he had in his preseason while his, during his time uh, with Cincinnati. But he does a great job securing the football and getting it vertical. It's a great challenge for us when it comes to the, in our coverage game, being able to go downfield, straining coverage, keep leverage on the football, and then again, attack the football when it comes to that, see if we can steal a possession and put our offense in better field position. And then when it comes to their kicker and their punters, Zane Gonzalez has been playing well. You know, he had a couple of 50-yarders versus us the last time we played him. He's been continuing to get better this year. Lachlan Edwards, that was his first game versus us as well. He continues to get better. Um, they have, and then obviously Jansen, their, their snapper, he helps with that. But overall, Chase Blackburn has done a great job with that unit. Those guys, they kind of match his, 
his style as, it has, as he was as a player. They're physical, they're relentless to the football. Um, they have guys like Stafford, number 50. He does a great job in coverage, one of the leading tacklers when it comes to that. Franklin, another guy, he's a really dominant gunner. When it comes to playing that position, I believe he has four or five tackles, beats double press all the time. And then Chandler, their, their safety on kickoff and then their personal protector on the punt team, he does a good job being a quarterback for those guys on those coverage units. What, maybe, you know, I want to talk to you about this. What's really Felipe's role? Like, why, why have him? It's rare for a quarterback to be on special teams. Like, what exactly is the goal there with him? What do you see out of him to put him there? I mean, he makes. He makes his role whatever he wants it to be. It's, you know, having complete ownership. We put him in various positions, but again, he's on the team and we're coaching the 53 that are on the roster. So whatever his role is, whatever he could bring to the table, whether it's offense or, you know, special teams, coverage units, return units, whatever it is, um, he's doing a great job of, you know, working his tail off, you know, being detailed, learning as much as he can. He's a football player. You know, it just so happened he wears a quarterback number and he wears a red jersey. So whatever position he plays, whatever position he plays. But the answer to your question is whatever you want it to be. You know what I mean? It's whatever he wants it to be. And it's a great opportunity and it's a privilege to have him on the roster and be able to work with him day in and day out. Have you had a quarterback, I mean, have you had a quarterback be on special teams like this before? Oh, no, no. But it's a, it's a blessing. I mean, just like I talk about Koo. Koo's a football player that just so happened kicked. You know, Felipe's a football player just so happened. He, he has a strong arm and he – Wears a red jersey at practice at Flowery Branch. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, but, you know, so I mean, how does that happen? Does he go to you and say, hey, I want to try special teams because I'm trying all these other things? Does that happen when you guys were messing with him a little bit at tight end? Like, how does that occur? That, this, that, that comes I mean, those conversations are, you know, between Coach Smith and myself. Coach Smith does a great job at evaluating talent and evaluating people's skill sets and being able to, you know, press the envelope and make guys uncomfortable to put them in positions to help the football team, which has been awesome. And I'm a firm believer being uncomfortable plus faith equals great growth. And you see that from Felipe. You know, it's been uncomfortable learning new positions, whether it's on offense or on special teams, but he's grown a lot when it comes comes to that in his that aspect of the game. And he's getting pulled from every which direction, but he's been doing a great job handling it, handling it and being a pro about it. Does the threat of a fake, do you think, help you? Just that he's always out there and, I mean, he could step behind a long snapper and throw it. Do you think that? Or punt it. Yeah. Or, or punt or it. Or you know. Yeah. I understand yeah. That, yeah. That, he's, that he's a realistic threat to throw the ball on fourth down. Do you think that maybe? put something else in the opposition's mind. And yeah, maybe, maybe not. And then other guys that play that position too, they have the they have the ability to throw the ball too. So I mean, you look at Taysom Hill when he was a PP for the Saints. Right. I mean, you go back there and he will have one glove off on that throwing hand. He's like, okay. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, better be on high alert. So we'll see. I mean, I th I think so. I think it brings that element. But he does a great job of just being a pro, being physical at the point of attack. He's been in there for punt protection, blocking, and he's a quarterback. And so he's a quarterback of our punt team when he's out there. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Appreciate hey, it. Y'all take care. Thanks, All right.